move on to the next one. Uh, mm -hmm. That is uh, Heidi Pack from the University of Wisconsin. Heidi, can you hear us? Yes. Can you great. hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Great to see you, and great to see your, your uh, aging pharma background. <laughs> and we can see your slides, so you can just go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about the role of fasting in a calorie restricted diet. Uh, before I start, I would like to thank the committee and organizers of ARDD for setting this up and inviting me for a short talk. And all the Lamming Lab members and funding sources that made this work possible. So most of the audience here probably already know that CR extends health span and lifespan in a wide array of species. However, there is an overlooked question that has not been answered. In a research setting, a typical mouse eats majority of their daily portion during the dark cycle in small bouts. However, when you place a mouse on CR, they develop a hyperphagic response in that they eat their entire daily portion within about two hours. So this essentially means that um, they are fasting for about 22 hours. <clears throat> this led me to question, is the CR response directly the result of reduction of caloric intake or is fasting required to produce the CR response? And so to address this question, we designed unique feeding paradigms to identify the role of fasting and energy restriction in the calorie restricted paradigm. So I'm just going to go um, over the uh, diets with you. And AL is the standard ad lib control. Diluted AL is a CR model that eliminates fasting by replacing 50% of the bulk with indigestible cellulose. So they have ad lib access to food while being calorically restricted. TR.CR is a CR model that eliminates the binging behavior of CR mice by providing three equal portions during the dark cycle. And lastly, CR is the classical CR model where they are fed once a day at the beginning of the light cycle. Um, I studied the effects on C57 black 6J and DBA2J male and female mice, but for um, purpose of time, I'm only going to be presenting data on my B6 males. Um, so B6 males on all three modes of CR had improved glucose tolerance. However, strikingly, only one day, once a day fed CR mice had improved insulin sensitivity. This suggested to us that prolonged fasting is required for the insulin sensitivity that we see in a CR mouse. We also examined fuel utilization using metabolic chambers. In a standard ad lib fed mouse, the respiratory exchange ratio value will be around 0 0.9 to uh, 1. Post feeding, which indicates that they primarily utilize carbohydrates as their main energy source, this value will fall, um, fall to 0 0.7 when the mouse is using lipids as their energy source. In a CR mouse, the RER value will pass one, here shown in black, which suggests they are synthesizing fatty acids for storage and then drop to a value of 0.7. Uh, these results have already been published from other groups and suggest that CR mice synth synthesize fats and utilize these fats as their energy source throughout the day. Uh, now, when you look at the diluted ad lib group, um, shown in blue, it has about the same trend line as the control mice. What this tells us is that to get this distinct RER curve you see in a CR mouse, fasting is required. Uh, we next examined how calories and fasting impacted metabolism by conducting targeted metabolomic analysis of liver and muscle in collaboration with John Dunu's lab at Wisconsin Institute of Discovery and the University of Alabama Nathan Shock Center. Here, these PCA plots show a distinct metabolomic signature of CR mice. And surprisingly, diluted ad lib and ad lib groups were essentially the same. Um, the diluted ad lib displayed a slight shift away from the ad lib group and skeletal muscle, suggesting prolonged fasting is required to produce the distinct metabolomic signature of CR in the liver, while the reduction of calorie intake has fasting independent effects on the metabolome of skeletal muscle. Now to fully address the fasting question, we needed a fifth feeding paradigm where a mouse fasted as long as a CR group but consumed similar amount of calories as the ad lib control mouse, here labeled as TR.AL. Uh, by the end of the experiment, TR.AL group had comparable change of body weight and fat as the CR mice. We saw similar improvement of glucose tolerance as seen before, as well as similar improvement in insulin tolerance as uh, observed by only once a day fed CR mouse. We see the same distinct RER curve you saw previously with an increase in fatty acid oxidation. And next, we wanted to see what was happening at the transcriptional level of these mice. Um, these are heat maps of transcript 
transcriptomics data by RNA-seq of liver and inguinal white adipose tissue. As you can see, the change is very similar. Um, we observed about 1,800 DEGs in Iowa and about 2,700 DEGs in liver when compared to the ADLIB group. But when we compared the TR.AL to CR, over 90% of these DEGs were the same for both groups. From this, we were able to narrow down to these pathways in the liver and IWAT. The little circles in the Venn diagram represents uh, the significant number of pathways found using functional enrichment analysis. I've highlighted uh, specific pathways where red indicates pathways moving in the same direction for both liver and IWA, while blue shows opposite direction in each tissue. Uh, but the main takeaway message for this slide is to show you that many of the up and down regulated pathways are the same between a calorically restricted animal versus a fasting model without calorie restriction. All the results I have presented so far were conducted on young mice, started around nine weeks old. So we wanted to ask how a fasting versus a non-fasting model of calorie restriction responded with age. Um, again, I placed mice on ad-lib, diluted ad-lib, and CR diet. Um, however, this time I implemented these studies when they were four months old and monitored diets, um, diet response with GTT, ITT, metabolic chambers, and frailty scoring at various time points. Uh, the results shown here were done when these mice were about 19 months old. Like the young mice, we saw an improvement in glucose tolerance and insulin sensitivity. Additionally, fasting was required to see an improvement in frailty score. This study is still ongoing, so we don't have a complete lifespan curve, but here we predict the probability of survival is decreased with a non-fasting calorically restricted animal. Therefore, our findings suggest that restricting calories without imposed fasting does not protect from age-associated frailty and does not extend lifespan. So the main takeaway from this study is that while many of the phenotypes associated with CR are also observed in diluted ad-lib fed mice, some phenotypes can only be found in fasting model of CR. Uh, this includes maintenance of lean mass, improved insulin sensitivity, increased fatty acid oxidation, decreased frailty, and increased lifespan. And so um, I've over overloaded you with a lot of information in a short period of time, but the main takeaway message is that fasting is required to promote insulin sensitivity in CR mice. Um, fasting is required to reprogram the metabolism to use fatty acid as a fuel source. Uh, fasting is required to produce a distinct metabolomic signature in CR mice and restriction of calories without the imposed fasting does not protect from age associated frailty and does not extend lifespan. Lastly, fasting without caloric restriction is sufficient to recap recapitulate a CR diet with, which includes similar transcriptional landscape. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Heidi. Really a great talk. Um, we have time for one question from Slack. Uh, and uh, I'll, uh, we have one from Sarah Mitchell. Uh, who writes, hey, Heidi, I think I missed it, but are these males or females? Males. The, um, I've only presented male data. Very interesting. Then, since it's such a short question, I will uh, ask my own question. So is okay. uh, time-restricted <laughs> feeding, is that dependent on diet? For example, if you have your dot list reduced uh, branch chain amino acid diet, does that, do you also need to have, or will you have a benefit from time-restricting this type of diet? You know, that's a great question. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think anyone has looked into restricting branching amino acids and doing a calorie restriction study. Um, but, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. I guess we will hopefully know in the future. So thank yeah. you very much, Heidi, uh, for your talk.